Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020 online tournament. This is the Rapid Tournament and it's played as a part of Magnus Carlsen a Tour. So if you want to know more about that tournament, check the link over there because uh, I already showed one of the games from that uh, from that tournament where Magnus Carlsen won against uh, Alexander Grishuk uh, and also uh, I showed the final standings after the four rounds of the day one because there were four rounds uh, in day one and also I show you know the, the the players over there and the pairings and other scores so if you are interested just you know click the link and check over there after this game uh, and now I would like to show you the game between Hikaru Nakamura number four in rapid time format uh, he's ranking 2829 veteran of chess and his uh, opponent Alireza Firuja a future of chess as many people say and uh, his ranking in rapid 2703 and that means he is number 36 in the world but everybody wants to uh, see him uh, in the tournament so uh, Magnus Carlsen invite him as well uh, and about the meetings uh, with Nakamura, Alireza Firuja actually won only once in 2019 in the Blitz Championship. However, in 2020, he lost four games and drew two times. And that's all of their encounters. So uh, really everything is in favor of uh, Hikaru Nakamura. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, Nakamura with white pieces opens with d4. We have knight on f6 by Alireza Firuja, knight on f3, d5, and now e3. e3, this is call system, and after e6, b3, uh, bishop on e7 and bishop on b2, uh, we have called Zuckertort system. So this is system played in 19th century by Johannes Zuckertort uh, and then later by uh, Belgian master uh, Kohl. And he got a lot of successes with that system. He uh, finished a lot of tournaments ahead of Tartakov, Rubinstein. Also, Rubinstein played that uh, that system. So definitely a uh, very solid system. However, it's not played nowadays. So Hikaru Nakamura want to check if Alireza Firuja knows something, uh, some classic games. So that's very interesting what's gonna happen. Uh, we have Castle by Firuja and Bishop on D3. And you already see that these bishops uh, always if they are place this way they are always deadly uh, at least they try to be deadly if not defended properly so for example Akiba Rubinstein produced the, the his immortal game with this idea of the bishop on these diagonals uh, but also Vishwanathan Anand not long time ago also create his uh, immortal game so uh, definitely very good ideas and how Alireza Firuja gonna react to that he played b6 which is, which is, of course, theory. We have castle, bishop on b7, knight b on d2, and now c5. So, uh, very energetic. And here Hikaru Nakamura has uh, various choices. So, the most solid, the most known is, of course, uh, e5, as the knight on b8 was not developed yet. So, for example, after knight b on d7, then f4. Okay, and then create this stone wall and the game can continue. So that's the uh, one way of, of dealing with that position. Also, C4, uh, playing this structure, pawn structure, very typical, uh, symmetrical as well, and uh, also very, very solid. So for example, after knight on C6, then rook C1 and so on. So this can be played. However, Hikaru Nakamura goes for A3 a3 very silent move but he knows that position and i will explain you why uh, in a while we have knight on c6 by uh Arieza firuja d takes on c5 b takes on c5 and now c4 so uh, all of these moves are well known uh, and here we have a5 by Arieza firuja so attack uh, on b3 is on the way and now we have a c takes on d5 E takes on d5 and queen on c2 and look at this position now this is quite important and very well known okay first uh, this battery is facing h7 so now the first threat of course is bishop takes on f6 
and then uh, white can win the pawn. So that's the that's the first thing. Uh, and this position was reached by Hikaru Nakamura already in his career. Uh, he played in 2013 against Boris Gelfand. A uh, very strong uh, Russian grandmaster and Boris Gelfand uh, want to play solid. He goes for g6. Obvious move in this position. Okay, it's very very obvious move. And after rook a on d1, which is very important, this rook moves to d1. Uh, then knight on d7 and knight b1, a bishop on f6. So Boris Gelfand neutralized both of the bishops. Now this bishop has nothing to do. This bishop also uh, facing some enemy. So uh, this is what Boris Gelfand uh, played. And after knight on c3, uh, the players played for for some time and. And that was a draw. White stands slightly better, but that was only a draw. But here Ali Reza Firuzia goes for a more wild um, variation and he play a4. Uh, and it is also uh, already very sneaky idea. Now, uh, if the bishop takes on f6, then this bishop would you would come with the tempo on the rook. So rook would have to be moved, uh, and then there would be a time to 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 save the h7 pawn. So um, not this way. Uh, b4 is even worse because after c takes on b4, uh, white can't actually takes on b4 because knight can jump and attack the queen and the bishop. So all the advantage of white would just go on. Uh, but after queen on b1, it's not better because b3. And this already is uh, it's just disaster, okay? Uh, black have a really nice advantage. But Hikaru Nakamura, of course, don't go for these shady lines and he play the most solid rook A on D1. As you see, very important move by Hikaru Nakamura. He thinks this is principle of this opening, so that's why he played that. And now after A takes on B3, Knight on B3. And now can you spot the good move uh, as black? I believe you can spot the good move, but probably for the different reasons. Uh, because the best move in the position is C4. Uh, but not because of this fork, but because of open this diagonal and double attack on a3. So that is the idea. Because after bishop takes on c4, uh, the bishop can't be taken because of this pin. Okay? Uh, but after bishop on a3, uh, black gonna exchange the bishops. A very dangerous bishop. And if white want to save it, so bishop on a1. Black would move this bishop uh, on d6. And now look at black position. These bishops are the monsters now. Okay? And this bishop is under attack now, so have to be removed here. So black would, you know, uh, get a very, very nice attacking chances and white more passive position. So uh, definitely good move c4. However, Ali Reza Firuja wanted to improve that. Now keep in mind that the pawn is attacked twice. Uh, and also there is a trick here, uh, an attack on h7. Uh, Alireza want to improve that position and he play queen on b6. Uh, queen on b6 with the idea of c4. Now c4 would be very dangerous. The problem is uh, he didn't calculate well. Um, we have bishop on f6. Uh, and now if bishop takes on f6, the problem is knight on c5, of course. And then, and then there is a fork. That, that would be just just disaster. So queen c7, knight b7, uh, queen b7, now bishop on h7, uh, and now even rook on d5, okay? So g6 would not work because rook d6, okay? So exchanging one of these pieces for this bishop, and now uh, white has extra two or three pawns, and, uh, and that's definitely winning. So we have g takes on f6. And now the, the position of king is quite exposed. So very dangerous uh, for black to play that now. Uh, we have, of course, bishop on h7. At least uh, this pawn is defended twice. And now king on h8. Uh, and here knight on h4. So Hikaru Nakamura starts his attack. We have knight on e5, uh, bringing the, the, the piece to the defend. And now knight on f5. And here is the critical position of the game, because actually Alireza Firuzia has to calculate really, really great. Uh, and it looks like he has losing position, but he still could save it, at least try. Uh, what he played is was rook on a3, rook on a3. So he just wanted to exchange the bishop uh, for the knight. 
and the game could continue, everything would be fine. However, Hikaru Nakamura didn't care for the knight and he played queen on e2. Queen on e2, okay? And then, uh, no idea what, what uh, Alireza Firuja did, but rook on a4, very strange move because after queen on h5 he resigned the game because he has nothing to do here uh, checkmate is coming bishop on g6 and that's a checkmate for example uh, making some space for the king doesn't work bishop on g6 king g8 now queen h7 and that would be a checkmate so a uh, very very strange decision here however he couldn't save the game here uh, for example king on h7 okay that's pretty logical queen h5 uh, king g8 and queen h6 and checkmate is coming and nothing can be can be done here okay uh, knight on f3 uh, throw some pieces but it doesn't matter because checkmate is coming so not this way uh, also rook on g8 maybe with some ideas you know but it's all too slow also what white can do is just exchange just exchange the pieces king g8 knight d7 with check now uh, both knights are under attack so just win another pawn very dangerous past pawn uh, and now knight f5 and it's winning for white extra exchange extra pawn uh, and also look at this these are some nasty ideas now on the on the on the eighth rank so uh definitely winning for white so nothing could be done here in this position already after queen on e2 okay however as i said after knight on f5 can this game be saved here rook f on e8 defending the bishop but also very important making a space on f8 and what now queen on e2 is not enough it's not winning because king on h7 works now queen h5 king g8 and the attack can't be continued because uh, queen on h6 gonna be met with the bishop on f8 of course uh, and the same with the with the knight on h6 king on f8 okay and these pieces cannot be coordinated so uh, that would be a you know just a draw so why would have to try to bring another pieces for example f4 trying to bring the rook uh, but it also doesn't work knight on g6 now rook f3 uh, bishop c8 and now black gonna just exchange the pieces because they are uh, one piece up already so after rook on h3 bishop f5 and white even can't take it because gonna lose another piece okay so a g4 would have to be played and after uh, queen on b3 uh, g takes on f5 queen c2 very important move uh, still keeping an eye on d1 but also defending g6 and after f takes on g6 f takes on g6 look at this the king can escape okay so queen h7 you see already what i mean king f8 now the rook is under attack so rook f1 uh, and there is no checkmate because the king can escape so not this way definitely after uh, after rook f on e8 what white could try to play is f4 but it's also not guaranteed anything because knight g6 and the bishop is still under attack so white the only chance is bishop takes on g6 f takes on g6 knight e7 just exchange everything and here uh it would be tempting to take on g6 but actually that would be uh that would be losing because after uh, g6 uh the knight is hanging of course it cannot be taken now but it can be taken later rook on g8 first attacking the queen uh, so now queen can't take on f6 because it's still guarded that is important here uh, and also cannot go to h6 because we would have the you know the queen trapped so queen h5 and after rook on h7 queen f5 now d4 and you see that already that's uh, windmill is coming so e4 would have to be played and now black at the end can take the knight and win the game so not this way again very very uh, interesting continuation here white actually would have to play something like rook on b1 and now focus maybe here uh, on c5 
but but it's still very very difficult to win that but white has one extra pawn so it's still possible so that was the best chance uh, actually for Alireza Firuja to try to draw the game still a lot to play here in this position uh, so he should try this this you know rook f on e8 uh, but as we know after rook on a3 uh, he had to resign queen e2 queen h5 and he had to resign so uh, thanks for watching and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike and uh, if you want to see another games uh, press subscribe smash bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one